What's up, everybody out there? It's your girl B from Tacoma Gospel Music News, and I am here on the red carpet at the screening of season two of The Preachers of LA. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of people here. You see Bishop Jones is back here in the background. Yeah, he is hilarious. You wait until you hear what he had to tell us earlier today at the Four Seasons. Yeah. This is going to be crazy, and I want you guys to make sure you tune in here to Tacoa Gospel Music News for all of the latest and greatest in gospel music news and entertainment. God bless you, and you stay tuned. Really excited. We have a great series. Uh, the pastors are phenomenal. Um, I think the show is going to be just incredibly just amazing and compelling. I think the audience will love this series. And uh, I think the pastors have opened up a lot more with the families, the congregations. It's just going to be an incredible series. We're excited about it. Uh, well, Holly Carter uh, is my partner. She uh, and I produced this thing together. Um, she actually brought the project to me. And uh, we ended up, you know, producing this thing together and developing it. And, uh, uh, you know, ultimately we work with the pastors and, you know, we talk to them about their stories and, um, you know, they ultimately just ended up kind of, you know, feeling comfortable to, you know, work with us on this project and, and ultimately Oxygen. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, you know, my dad owned a bunch of TV stations, Christian TV stations in Detroit and New Orleans. So I grew up in the business and... Uh, you know, I, I've been involved in several uh, uh, projects that I produced or executive produced. I have a show on BET that I executive produced called Vindicated. Um, uh, executive produced The Sheards on BET, uh, produced on uh, season one of Mary Mary. Um, so I'm just really excited uh, that, you know, we, we're producing and uh, this show with Oxygen, uh, which is a great, great series. So I'm really excited. Uh, I mean, there there's so many faith-based movies and television shows out there. I think Preachers of L.A. is just, you know, uh, a great show. I think it's different from a lot of, a lot of other series, but um, just based upon the cast and, and the way we produce it and, and also the network. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think this show um, is, is going to open the door for people to see more, you know, and hopefully we'll be franchising this scene this this show soon um so which we're looking at so we're really really excited about the future of this of this this brand and this franchise Preachers of atlanta or you know uh, hey maybe like maybe you guys are maybe about. we'll see we'll see you have to tune in to this series support this show watch the show and uh i think you know um we'll uh we'll, we'll see what happens you know we'll see what happens I want to get started and um, ask a, a, a few questions. Bishop Jones, I, th I just, for this job that you have her, why do you, why do you think that Loretta is good for this job? Because she's good. That's good. Y'all agree? Nope. Well, I, I, I just, well, let me ask you this. Do you agree to be good at what you do or you don't agree to be mad? Well, let, hold on, before we get into all that, that what she do? to come at Loretta, at the head's house. Do you think that was right? No, do you think no, that she? No, do you yeah, think I it was the right place? No, no, I don't think. I don't think that. Ever Ron says without dispute whatsoever. So I will talk to Levette because I'll be talking to an extension of Ron. <laughs> well, I'm so glad I'm sitting here. <laughs> Let me. Do you think that you all, uh, Bishop? Do you think that the two of you ever get past this Good afternoon. This is Bianca from Tacoa Gospel Music News and from WNRR Gospel 1380 Atlanta. And I'm here live at the Four Seasons Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here to interview Pastor Ronald Gibson and Bishop Noel Jones, who are two cast members of season two of The Preachers of L.A., which is on Oxygen Network. Right, well, this is Bianca Woodard, and I'm here with the Preachers of L.A., two of the pastors or bishops from the Preachers of L.A., Bishop Ron Gibson and Bishop Noel Jones. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. We're doing well. Thank you for having us. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we're here in Atlanta for your premiere. I'm sorry, not the premiere, but for a sneak peek or a screening for season two. So how does it feel? Let's start with you, Bishop Jones. How does it feel to have a second season of The Preachers of L.A.? 
uh, it feels good. Uh, it just feels good. I think it feels good simply because, uh, first of all, the first season had to be successful, and, uh, and the second season is probably going to add and not detract at all. It's going to add, and, and I think what it's going to add is clarity. Uh, for those who were seeking clarity in the first season. And uh, I think it's also going to continue to help us to get our message across. Mine, particularly, is that to minimize the, mm, the iconoclastic proclivities that people have towards pastors and putting them up on pedestals that nobody can live on, uh, you know. And I think my, my qu little quick statement on that is, you know, I'm trying to be a one-liner like Ron, but I can't. Uh, so I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to say that, uh, that to whom uh, much is given, much is required. Uh, and that's what the category we fall in. But what I want to say to everybody is to whom much is given, all is not required. You give me all, and then you can require all. And that's why God does not require much from whom he gives little. And he will not require all from whom he gives much. And at the end of the day, the all in all is God himself through Jesus Christ. Something else. <laughs> this is something else. He think he just you you just schooled me, sir. <laughs> well, he, yeah, I think you know he just dropped a couple of words on me. You know, he, he we we go, we gonna come back down that road in just a moment. But yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm gonna come back down that road. But Bishop Gibson, um, there was a scene from the trailer for season two where you were out there with a young man, and you know you guys kind of got into a little little something going on so can you just explain that or break that out a little bit more for us what happened there I grew up in the Imperial Courts projects and that's one of the most notorious projects in South Central and this young man was in his 20s and he's a young young gangster and he heard I was coming through and he came he had this camera in my face so at first I, I was very tolerant but after a while I became annoying to the point of harassment so I said, young man, you know, take the camera out of my face. He said, you brought cameras to our hood? You know, I said, I got, a, I got a camera in your face. I said, well, you know, you got about five seconds to take that camera off my face. I'm going to ask you to take it out of my face. I'm going to tell you to take it out of my face. And then it's going to be on, you know. So I asked him, then I told him. He said, we don't know you. We don't know you. I said, of course you don't know me. The game you playing, I put it out there. In the gang world, he's considered a YG, which is an acronym for Young Gangster. And his name was Loco. And he said he didn't know me. I said, you're too young to know me. I lived here doing the Watts riot. And part of the gang banging you doing, I put it out there. And so they pulled us off of each other, as you see in, in, that, pre, in, that, in that situation there, in that episode. But at the end of the day, he came back up to me because the older, the OGs, uh, the double OGs who were in their 40s and 50s, told him who I was. And he, we got together. He apologized. I apologized to him. And at Bishop Jones Church, we had a... Uh, uh, a, a gathering and he was there the young man and they called me outside and to my surprise he apologized and I was able to lead him to the Lord with about 10 other uh, ex-crips I would like to say ex-crips because they accepted the Lord and if any man be in Christ he's a new creature old things have passed away so I'm still praying for loco but one thing that we preachers can't do when the devil tries to come and intimidate us through people are uh, we just because we're men of the cloth doesn't mean we're soft and they can't take our meekness for weakness because, you know, that's not how it is. You know, that's not how it is with us. You know, thank you. Okay. All right. So, Bishop Jones, um, you have a slight philosophy here of, uh, you know, not necessarily believing in monogamy. So uh, we're going to go there for just a second, you know, because you talked about how, you know, you don't put your preacher on a pedestal and all the good stuff yes. like that. You know, you brought that up just a little bit earlier. So, um can you just ex break that out for us just a little bit? And then can you put that in the context of where the Bible talks about how a bishop should be the husband of one wife? So I'm just wondering about that. Well, well of course, uh, when, when, when you take the husband of one wife into context, you have to understand that he was talking to polygamists at the time. So men were married to multiple women at the time. And Paul, in presenting Christianity, brought them back to a, a, a monogamy uh, environment. And that is the husband of one wife and so that is what that is about it wasn't it wasn't saying that a man uh, could not be married 
it simply says that he should be the husband of one wife or that a man could not be single rather let see the very key point that to be the bishop should be a husband of one wife is significant of an individual not having multiple wives as it was a practice in those days and in some religions it's a practice today where they have multiple wives uh, but it didn't say that a man couldn't be single so it is not saying that you must be married and I say that because the individual who is giving us that word it was a single man himself and and I think that's a point that everybody should understand and when you look at the Bible you see many many characters who were extraordinarily anointed and did great work for God uh, who were not married uh, Peter was married of course but it says nothing about John it says nothing about Elijah, Elisha. Uh, it says nothing about many, many characters in the Bible. And those who were married, particularly in the Old Testament, were extremely problematic because they had multiple wives and they were still trying to take other people's wives from them as David did in the case of Uriah. So can I ask you a question? Regarding that? I'll, yes, I'll ask so in, in regards to that, and I know we're wrapping up, but in regards to that, um, What's going on with you? And there was a little moment there on the on the preview too, with you all were getting into it kind of at the table, and Loretta was there. You know, so what? Why don't you just tell her? You know, just go away. It's not going to happen. Basically, I mean, I'm just. No, I don't have to. I, I I don't have to tell her to go away because it's not going to happen, because I told her when it began that I was not about to. I'm not trying to be married now. Why are you in my space? Because uh, we, if we're going to be friends, we're going to be friends. Uh, uh, I'm not the marrying kind. One, because I'm out of balance. I was out of balance when I lost my relationship with my first wife. I was gone all the time. And my schedule hasn't changed. Indeed, and in fact, it's more intense. It's worse. And, uh, and, and consequently, I'm not going to trail somebody along or pull somebody along or give an impression that I'm going to do what I don't have in my mind to do. Now, uh, when initially it was fine, but now uh, with, with, uh, with my, uh, my dear friend here and with everybody else on the, uh, around the world, uh, pushing and probing and sending pins and you know, uh, now I'm finding out that there is something brewing in her heart that uh, makes for a decision. You understand what I'm saying? So you you watch and and uh, have everybody to watch and see uh, just how that decision works itself out in season two. So beginning on the 20th of this month, August the 20th, Wednesday night, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 9 o'clock Central, we will be on and popping. Come on and check it out. My, 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 my. See what it's about. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I got a whole lot of last words, but we're going to have big things popping in season two. It's longer, it's stronger, we're more authentic, and we're more transparent. And like Bishop said, you don't want to miss a night, especially especially the first night. Do okay. you want to need a one-liner? I need a one-liner. Okay, if you move your feet, if you move, if you move your if you move your feet, you're gonna lose your seat. So keep it locked, August the 20th. You're gonna miss something in the episode. You don't want to miss the first episode. It includes Bishop okay. and myself and some of the other guys really going in. Okay. With, with no no bars held we go in we're very transparent and these other guys these other pastors as i think because we were very transparent they've now become very authentic and very transparent so season two is longer it's stronger very compelling some some episodes there won't be a dry eye in the house but i think it's a learning experience from our mistakes and some of the things that we've learned so we're not new to it we're true to it and that was a one-liner from Bishop Gibson. So we want you guys to tune into Oxygen Network and check out the Preachers of L.A. You do not want to miss this season. Thank you guys so much for being with me.